Hey guys, welcome to our online campus. My name is Chase and I'm family pastor here at Rolling Hills. Chase, we're so glad that you are here this morning and good morning to each of you who are joining us in our online campus community today. It is a joy that we get to worship with you this morning. And Chase, it's an extra special Sunday around here, isn't it? Can you it tell us is. a little bit about what we've got going on? So as everybody knows, we're about ready to start another school year, which means at all of our campuses, we are moving kids up to the Woo-hoo. next grade. It's a big big celebration, big time. What we want to do, we want to celebrate uh, their transitions in life. And so we believe this is a mile marker for every kid. There's a a transition up a grade. And so we want to celebrate what God's doing in their life now. And we're going to look forward to what God's going to do in their lives in this next year. That's awesome. We are so excited to celebrate you all. And if you are a parent or a student and you're worshiping online with us, know that we are praying for you as we head into this fall and this school year, and we are cheering you all on. We're so excited and expectant to see what God's going to do in your life this school year. So woohoo, here we go. Awesome, can't wait. (laughs) So it's also a special Sunday because we are wrapping up our masterclass series as we've been walking through the gospel of Mark week by week, chapter by chapter together. It's been a powerful series. And Chase, what has been your favorite part of this series? I just have loved uh, taking a deeper look into a a book of the Bible and Mm. Mark and looking at the life of Jesus. And there's lots of nuances in the text Mm. that every week we've just learned something new. But one of the things that that I've really pulled out of it and really we all learn together as a church Mm. family is that we're all required to respond to King Jesus, uh, Jesus as Lord and Savior of our lives. We we don't have an option of that. Everybody has to respond Mm. to it. And so, so what I loved about it is that people have been responding over the summer and people have been taking next steps of faith, whether that's, uh, hey, I want to start to serve because I recognize that uh, who King Jesus is and I want to serve him or I want to take next steps in baptism because because I've given my life to Jesus. He's my savior and he's my Lord and I want to make my public declaration of faith. So we've seen incredible things happen this summer and certainly we look forward to what's going to happen this fall as we come out of the series. But what about you? What have you learned in Masterclass? Yeah, well, I've, I've been able to share with you all a little bit over this summer what God's been teaching me in my life. But my very favorite part has been hearing from you guys, yeah. hearing story after story of what God's been doing in your life this summer and through this series. How you've, becoming, how you've become more devoted, stronger followers of Jesus because of what we're learning from his disciples mm-hmm. and from Jesus's life. So thank you for sharing that. And we're excited to, to continue to see in our next series coming up how God will continue to, to use what we learned this summer, this series, and and transferring that into the rest of your life, into this fall, into this new season coming up. So as we are looking ahead to the fall, I am really excited because we're starting our midweek online groups. And ladies, these are specifically for you. We'll be going through the Encountering God study by Kelly Mincher, which I think is a great study to jump into right after this, this series we've just been in, learning how to be stronger, more devoted followers of Jesus. And now we're learning some specific spiritual disciplines as well for our daily, our regular walk with Jesus. So ladies, we would absolutely love for you to join us. We'll be staying connected through our Facebook group day by day. We'll, we'll be sharing prayer requests there, um, sharing what God is teaching in our lives there. But we'll also have two different Zoom group opportunities this fall. So we'll have that midday session that we've been having at 12 p.m. Central Time, but we're also adding an evening session at 6 p.m. Central Time. So ladies, go to rollinghills.church slash women to register to get all the details there and I just encourage you if you have never been a part of it or if you've if you got something great out of our past online studies just jump in and be a part of what God's doing with our online community this fall all right here's what we ask of you today um, as you're online we just love to interact with you we love feedback and and so what we love for you to do is uh, Put your name in there. Tell us who you are and your family members. But also, we would love to know what you're looking forward to this fall uh, as we approach the fall semester. Absolutely, we would love to hear from you. And if you're worshiping by watching this service on your TV, pull out your phone and head to our Rolling Hills app. You can download it at rollinghills.church slash app. Jump in there and just let us know that you're worshiping with us today. All right, well, let's get ready to worship together this morning. We are so thankful that you're here with us.
my God. Who is he? Jesus, the Nazarene, King of Kings. Don't believe in this person? Don't believe what we read? Just ask those there with him who saw what we can't see. Just ask the man who was healed in the house on the Sabbath. The woman freed from pain with just the touch of it. He's the one who fed thousands with the breaking of bread. Who shook up tradition, turned religion on its head. Just ask the disciples as he washed their feet. What they thought of the king on his knees. A healer, a teacher, a prophet, and a god. What did he mean when he said he died for us all? Just ask the people who saw him entering Jerusalem. Why they went from shouting Hosanna to crucify him. What changed in their heart, in their spirit, their mind, to turn from their deliverer and leave it all behind? Just ask the people, they're at his tomb on a Friday. What they saw happen in the course of just three days. When they thought it was over, they thought it was done. But God had other plans for his one and only son. Saturday was silent. Surely it was true. Since when it has impossible to ever stop you? Friday's disappointment. Well, Sunday's empty too. Since when it has impossible to ever stop you?
Good morning. Welcome to church. It's so good to see everybody. Okay, here's what I need you to do in the room. If you guys could make room for the people that are coming in, if you can tighten up, squeeze in a little bit. If you have some extra seats on your row, just make it. And while you're doing it, you can turn around and greet somebody in the process. Welcome to church. It's awesome. We got a lot of folks coming in in the back. If you could make room, that would be great. And while we make room, you can have a seat. Thank you guys so much. And welcome to those who are working and worshiping with us online. We are so thankful wherever you are tuning in from that you're here uh, worshiping with us today. Welcome, welcome. If you're a guest in the house, we're so thankful for you. If you're a guest online, we're grateful that you're here with us. And all we ask of you, if you are a guest, is pretty simple, is that you're handed a worship guide. And on the worship guide, there's a place that says connection card. If you can fill that out, put it on, in the uh, offering at the end of the service, we'd love to connect with you this week, let you know what God's doing at, at Rolling Hills. And also on the back of that is a place where we can put prayer requests. This is a place where you can write down any request that's going on in your life. And as a church staff, as prayer teams, a uh, part of our church, we'd love to pray on your behalf. We'd love to know, know what's going on. And every Monday morning, we gather together as a church staff, and we pray over every one of these requests. It's been happening for the past 11 years that I've been here, and every single Monday morning. It's really incredible what God has, has done. And also, there's a place that says, where are you today? You're going to need that at the end of the service as Pastor Jeff walks us through what that looks like and what that means. Now, today is special. Because um, if you're a parent in the room, then it is uh, a day where your kid moves up to the next grade. And the next couple of weeks, the past couple of weeks have been kind of crazy as we've gotten ready for school. Some of you have sent your kids off to school already. This week is a big week because you're going to be sending kids off to school. I have a kindergartner, and so it's going to be the first time we watch her walk through those doors. And I'm going to be in the car line just melt, melting down, right? Um, so pray for, pray for all the parents this week. Um, also, pray for uh, teachers, administration, um, all the kiddos that's going back to school. Let's, let's just commit this week to praying for all of those that are going back into, uh, into the process of schooling this year. It's going to be great. And today is Move Up Sunday for us, and it's a really exciting day. And if you didn't get a chance to go to the photo booth afterwards, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's so, super fun, and you're going to want to do that. Also, uh, on the 14th, August 14th, and 21st. Okay, remember those, August 14th to 21st. It's called Group Link. Group Link. Here's what we, we believe we believe that community works better in circles than it does rows. We love rows. We love what we get to do in here, but, but also you find connection in, in a community, in a, in a circle. So there's going to be the two weeks that you can get jump in uh, and be signed up for a community group. The next thing is uh, in, invited. There's going to be a graphic on the screen, invited. This is a women's event. And so, guys, you're excluded from this conversation. Women's event, it's August 25th. You can invite a friend. There's going to be tons of fun, food, fellowship. It's going to be incredible. You be, able, be, be sure to sign up for that. Today is the last week of our series called Masterclass. We've been in 16, 16 weeks 16 weeks. It's been incredible to watch what God has shown us throughout this, this study of the book of Mark. And so today it's Mark chapter 16. Pastor Jeff is going to be walking us through the last week of this series before we start a new series next week. All right, awesome. Here's what we'll do. The next thing we love to do, we love to uh, worship by way of just watching baptisms as we get to witness people taking their next steps of faith. It's incredible. So uh, Grace Simmons is going to be baptizing Stella today. So let's take a look at the screen. Good morning, Rolling Hills Church family. My name is Grace, and I'm so excited to be here with Stella today. And Stella, you are absolutely amazing. So we had the opportunity to talk at fourth and fifth grade camp about baptism about two weeks ago. And I know that without a doubt, you are absolutely ready. She is someone with the most joy, the most fun, and you are so great at always including people. So I want to ask you, what is God doing in your life, Stella? Well, I'm surrendering my life to Jesus Christ by giving, getting baptized. That's awesome. And have you accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life? Yes. 
Well, awesome. Now, not only as your friend and as your leader, but now also as your sister in Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. to see Stella take her next step of faith. Would you stand with us? Whether we recognize it or not, our God is doing a new thing and he is working miracles in every moment. Do you believe that? Do you believe it, guys? We get to celebrate that this morning. We get to celebrate who Jesus is and that he has the victory. The word of God says, behold, I am doing a new thing. Let him do a new thing today and celebrate it with us as we worship him. I want y'all to sing out. Sing out these lyrics. Praise our father with us.
He's borrowed for three days. Yes, his body there would not remain. Cause our God is wrought. Yes, he has. Come on. Yes, our God is nothing better we thank you that your name gives us life God that your name gives us purpose God that your name gives us meaning thank you Jesus we just say that this morning thank you Lord for all that your name is God all that you have done that you didn't have to do but you did it anyway Jesus, you are so good, you are so holy, and you are so worthy. And this morning, that is just what we say to you, Jesus. It's not about us. It's not about the things going on around us, Lord. We look to you, and you change it all. Thank you. Thank you for giving us that, God. You don't have to do it. You're so holy, and you're worthy, God. It's in your precious name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can take a seat. Thank you so much. Well, good morning, good morning, Rolling Hills Church family. It is so good to be together today. Welcome to everybody here at our Franklin campus. Welcome to everybody on our online campus. So glad that we could all be together worshiping our great God. And today we come to the culmination of this incredible series. We've been in this series called Masterclass. We've been walking through the Gospel of Mark, man, chapter by chapter. And we've been seeing Jesus, right? As Jesus is our master and following him. And what does it mean to be a disciple? And so we've been walking through, right, in Mark chapter 1, it opens with Jesus' earthly ministry, and, and Jesus begins to teach, and people are like, you know, unbelievable, like, wow, I can't believe this. And I love in Mark 1, 27, where Jesus is teaching, and the people are like, what is this? And that same phrase is used back in the Exodus, when God brought his children of Israel out, and he gave them manna, and they went out to get manna to eat in the middle of the desert, God provides for his people, and they said, what is this, right? So you got physical nourishment, now Jesus comes the fulfillment of the entire Old Testament, the spiritual nourishment for our souls. Jesus begins to heal people, restore people. I mean, miracles are happening. People are flocking to Jesus. And so we've seen over these last, you know, 15 chapters, all the crowds, the crowds that have come, everywhere Jesus went, there were crowds. People wanted to be around Jesus. And we've seen that with the Jews, but also the Gentiles, the Greeks and the Romans, everybody wants to be around Jesus. And then we've watched as Jesus looks into the crowd and says, hey, don't just stay on the sidelines. Come follow. Come follow, right? 
It's not just a show. Come follow, live your life. And we see how Jesus has called disciples, not just the 12 disciples. There were a lot of women who were following Jesus. There's others who are following Jesus. There are Gentiles, right? Non-Jewish people who are claiming that Jesus is the Messiah. And we're seeing all this happen. And then in Mark chapter 11, things begin to turn. Jesus comes into Jerusalem at that Passover, three years of earthly ministry, three years of miracles, three years of teaching. And he comes in, everybody's shouting, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, you know, on that Palm Sunday. And then as he continues to teach and talk about the kingdom of God, all of a sudden the chief priests and the religious leaders begin to say, no, 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 no. You know, Jesus is not the one. And, and they begin to see the pressure put on because they wanted a political Messiah. They wanted somebody to lead a revolt, a rebellion, to kick the Romans out. And what Jesus was doing was so much more. Jesus came to change not just circumstances, but to change hearts and to change lives, not simply for the Jews, but for all mankind. And that's why we're here today. It's because of what Jesus has done for us. And last week we saw Mark 15, Jesus being nailed to a cross, dying for your sins, for my sins. And the grace we receive in Christ. But we saw last week, that's not the end of the story. There's one more chapter, and that's today. Mark chapter 16. And it becomes the defining moment of all history. You know, we all have defining moments in our lives, right? Moments that we can look back and we go, wow, that impacted my life. Uh, my middle daughter turned 16 uh, this past week. And so, you know, you get your driver's license. Maybe you remember that time. You were so excited, you know, this freedom my older daughter is going off to college next week, and so we are going to be in mourning. You know, so like, my wife is going to be tough. It's going to be hard. We love her. Uh, but, you know, there's that defining moment, right? That's like, I'm going away. You, you remember those defining moments in your life? You know, you had those. Maybe you moved to a new state, a new city. Maybe you remember, you know, going to a new school and starting in a new place. Or maybe you remember standing at an altar and making a commitment. Man, that defining moment moment. And maybe you remember starting a new job and it was just like your dream job. And yeah, or maybe you remember coming home from the hospital with a, a new baby and just like, wow, my life just changed right here. <laughs> my life just changed. And now you're like, unbelievable love, unbelievable joy. You had no clue. But that's what we see today. This defining moment as Jesus not only died for our sins, but Jesus then comes and conquers death and makes a way for you and me to have eternal life. It's the defining moment of history and the defining moment of every one of our lives. What do you believe about Jesus? What do you believe? And will you follow him? Man, if you've got a Bible today, I want to invite you up with me to Mark 16. Mark 16, last chapter in our master class. Great job, church. We've been walking through, and man, we've come to this moment. And we saw last week after Jesus died on that cross, his body was taken down. A guy, Joseph of Arimathea, went to Pilate, the Roman governor. And this guy, Joseph, was a wealthy guy. But man, he identified with Jesus. He knew God was doing something more. And so he went boldly to Pilate. He asked for Jesus' body and he put him in his own tomb. And we left off with the women watching where Jesus was laid and knowing. But that was Friday. <laughs> And today is Sunday. Mark chapter 16, verse 1, when the Sabbath was over, that's Shabbat, right, for the Jews. So Friday night to Saturday night, that's Sabbath, that's Saturday. When Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Siloam, brought spices so they might go to anoint Jesus' body. So here they are, right, coming to anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, that's Sunday, Right? A lot of times people are like, well, we do church, it's on Sunday. The Jews used to be on Saturday. Well, now the first day of the week, that's Sunday when they worshiped, right? They came on that first day of the week just after sunrise and they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? And remember if the Romans, they put this huge stone, probably two tons in front of the tomb. We also know that there were Roman soldiers, a detachment from the other gospels that tell us there were four to 12 Roman soldiers that were there at the tomb. We also know the Romans put the Roman seal on the stone saying, if you move this stone, you will die. Okay, so then the women, good natured, thinking, hey, we're gonna go to anoint Jesus' body, right? And then they're thinking, well, wait a minute, there's a stone and there's guards and all this. How are we gonna do that? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. 
Things we think are impossible, man, they're nothing to God. God just makes a way. God's still rolling stones and moving them. And as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. So you can imagine the women kind of peeking in, and there is an angel. An angel right there. We know from the other gospels there were two. One spoke. Here's the angel. And he says, don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. Isn't that awesome? He is not here. See the place where they laid him? Come on, we're having a little Easter here in August, right? You know, (laughs) Jesus is alive. Look, but go tell his disciples and Peter, he's going ahead of you into Galilee and there you'll see him just as he told you. Just as he told you, everything Jesus said comes true. And you can remember walking through Mark, right? You remember in Mark chapter eight, even before Jesus comes into Jerusalem, Jesus says, guys, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to go into the Jerusalem, right? And and the chief priests, the religious leaders are going to hand me over. I will be crucified. I will die. But after three days, I will rise again. He tells them again in Mark chapter 9. After three days, I will rise again. Mark chapter 10. After three days, I will rise again. And here he is alive. Alive, just as he said. Well, trembling and bewildered, the women went out and they fled from the tomb. And they said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. You can imagine the women are like, what? We just saw an angel and and the stone was rolled away and Jesus' body's not there. And then we come to verse nine. Now, some of your translations may have a little script at the top that say the earliest manuscripts and some other ancient witnesses do not have verses nine through 20. I I love the historical accuracy of God's word. And and we see this in John chapter eight. And so people are like, hey, I just want you to know that there were a couple of fourth century manuscripts that didn't have 9 through 20, but we know from the early church fathers, right? Justin Martyr, 151 AD, who quoted from this. We know Irenaeus quoted from We know all these other manuscripts. You know, God's word is God's word, and it's so true. History, archaeology, science, everything backs up God's word. And we have the other gospels that show this. So when you get to verse 9, it says, here's what's happened after that. When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven out seven demons. And we know that from the Gospel of John. You remember John's resurrection and tells us that Jesus walked out and saw Mary Magdalene and she thought he was the gardener. Well, she went and told those who had been with him and they were mourning and weeping. So the 11 disciples, man, they're still weeping over Jesus being crucified. They're thinking, we spent three years following Jesus and and Mary comes in and, and when they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they did not believe it. And the Bible's so true, right? I mean, probably you and I, right? She comes in and goes, hey, he's alive. And you're probably going, right. Nobody's ever conquered death. You know? and they, they're just sitting there going, no way. No way. And in their mind, they're not going back and thinking, oh, this is what Jesus said. This is what Jesus said. Well, afterwards, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country. Okay, so that goes to Luke chapter 24. Remember the two guys on the road to Emmaus? Jesus is now in a resurrected body and and they're walking along and they're all sad and Jesus kind of starts walking with them. He goes, hey guys, what's the problem? Like, dude, everybody in Jerusalem knows, right? He's like, what? They're like, you know, Jesus, the the one we thought was the Messiah. We thought, you know, he was gonna overthrow the Romans and make the Jews and a place of prominence and and he was crucified and Jesus goes, oh, well, you know what? Maybe there's more to the story and he starts going through the Old Testament. I would have loved to have been there, right? And he goes to the Old Testament, he just shows them how the Messiah was going to be a suffering servant and redeem all mankind for the Jews and the Gentiles, was going to change hearts and lives, was going to make a right relationship with God. And then they sit down to eat and he breaks the bread and they realize it's Jesus, it's Jesus. Man, what an awesome moment. Well, these guys returned and reported it to the rest, but they didn't believe them either. (laughs) These guys come running in, they're like, no, 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 we've seen Jesus. And they're like, "Ah, I don't believe it. Well, later... Jesus appeared to the 11, right? Judas is out of the picture. Now we're down to 11. As they were eating, he rebuked them for their lack of faith. How many times do we have that lack of faith, right? For their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. Now, what we see is this, right? Whoever believes in the Lord Jesus and is baptized. Baptism is an outward expression 
of our faith in Jesus. Now, we don't believe that baptism is salvific. It doesn't save you, but it's a call for you, right? It's a call for you and I. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. And they will place their hands on sick people and and they will get well. You're thinking, wow, snakes? I didn't even see that, right? Like, where did that come from? Well, you know, there are these churches that have like snake handlers. I don't know if you ever see them. Maybe, you know, it's like, that's not what God's calling us to do here, okay? Right? We don't have to go pick up snakes. Uh, although we do see in Acts chapter 28, the apostle Paul was bitten by a viper, right? He just shakes it off into the fire and everybody's like, whoa, right? But, but what God's saying and Jesus is saying to us is, hey, I'm with you. And there's going to be things you don't have to be afraid. You're going to see miracles happen. You're going to see lives redeemed and restored. We don't go pick up snakes and go put the Lord to the test. Okay, that's not what it's saying. It's saying God is with us. Well, after the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and he sat at the right hand of God. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere. And the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. Bam. I mean, that awesome? Jesus is alive. And Jesus calls us then as his disciples to share that good news, to tell people, hey, this life is not all that there is. Okay, if you're taking notes today, here's some things I'd love for you to write down. If you've got a worship guide at our Franklin campus, if you're online, you can go to the Rolling Hills app and there's a place where you could fill in some blanks just to help us learn and to remember and to grow. All right, look at this. Jesus' resurrection means there is eternal life. There is eternal life. I love that. Here's what the angel said. Don't be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He's conquered death. He's not here. See the place where they laid him? Just look. He's not there, right? He's not there. See, death is no longer the end. I mean, you think about this. If you go back and read history, you go back and think about everybody who lived before. I mean, death was the end. There there was a fear, literal fear of death. I I mean, for so many people today even, right? There's this fear because death, that's it. It's over, right? And every one of us is going to pass that way at some point. You know, the mortality rate today, it's 100%, right? I mean, none of us are are getting out of that. I mean, we we think we can, we think we have more time and all that. But but the fact is, right, we are going to come to that point in our life. And this is so important for every one of us. But see, death is no longer the end. Look, there is more life (laughs) to come. You see, if you're in Christ, right, we pass from life to life. Death is simply a passageway from this life to eternal life. And that's what Jesus shows us. Jesus comes back in this resurrected body. Do you know when we get to heaven? A lot of people are like, heaven, I don't know what it's going to be like. And I'm a little, you know, a little scared, a little worried, but... When you read God's word about heaven, it's incredible. I mean, we are going to have eternity to spend worshiping God. We're going to have eternity with those that we love. We're going to be in a resurrected body. Praise God. No allergies, right? No calories. I mean, you're just like, this is going to be incredible. I mean, feast. I mean, it's, we have jobs to do in heaven. Do you know that? What we do here impacts eternity. And so what we see is I don't have to be afraid I don't have to live in that fear. I don't have to let death cripple me because I know there is more life to come. I know what's going on right here is short term. I know, I know what's right, happening right now, but I know what is to come. Hey, the best is still to come for all of us. It's still to come for all of us. God's not finished with us and eternity awaits. And for us to understand that. There's a family in our church in Brian and Molly Griggs, and they are just so on fire for the Lord, right? And um, they were baptized a couple years ago, and, and here they are, parents. They have a son, they have a, a daughter, and she's married. They have a granddaughter. And, and then a few years ago, Molly was um, diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And here she is, I mean, a nurse. She's been a school nurse, amazing woman of God. And I, I've just watched her. She was in our community group for the last year and you look at her Bible and she's got notes and everything but over the past year it's it's really progressed and here she is in her 50s but she has so much joy and never heard her complain never every time you'd ask her how she's doing she's like how are you doing 
How are your kids? How, oh, I love them. Tell them how. Just the, the joy in her and, and their faith was so strong. And, and then things were progressing and hospice came in. And two weeks ago, I get a text from Brian saying, you know, they say Molly's only got a few hours and maybe minutes. Can you come? I rushed over to the house and I get to the house and Molly's in a hospital bed and, and, and there's her whole family, right? Her mom is there, her husband, Brian, her son, Ben and Brittany and her husband, Houston, and Ellie, their nine-year-old daughter. And, and we were there, then more people from community group came in and staff from church. And so we're all gathered around her bed. And I just thought, you know, in this moment, nothing else matters. <laughs> we get caught up in all the things of this world, but it, in that moment, right, what matters is Jesus, <laughs> your faith, your family, church, community. And there was this moment that we held hands and, and we were praying over Molly. And, and you could tell Molly could hear every word. And then Ellie, her nine-year-old granddaughter, <laughs> prayed and said, Mimi, you're the best grandmother ever. And Mimi, I know I'll see you again. I love you. And man, I lost it. I was just crying in that moment. But I thought, you know what? Here's a nine-year-old going, I'm going to see you again. I'm going to be with you again. That's the resurrection. That's the hope we have. That's the truth of the gospel. Brian was like, Molly, (laughs) you saved me a seat on a bench. We're going to spend eternity together. You know what? Jesus' resurrection means this life is not all there is. There's more to come. We'll be with our loved ones. We know the goodness and the grace of God, that he is with us, that he is for us. (laughs) And we'll worship again with Molly one day, with all those who have gone before us. (laughs) Praise be to God. Praise be to God. You know, that's why it says in 1 Thessalonians, right? It says, brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be ignorant or uninformed about those who fall asleep. That's what it calls death. Those who fall asleep. We want you to know that the best is still to come. We want you to know that Jesus is coming for you. Guys, it tells us this. Encourage one another. Encourage one another. Encourage one another with these words. Man, we don't have to live in fear. We can live in faith to trust him. Hey, look at this. Jesus' resurrection means that we can live victorious lives today. It's not just that, hey, Jesus was resurrected and so I can't wait for heaven. No, God's not finished with us here. God still has a plan and purpose for us here. But go tell his disciples, and I love this, and Peter. Right? You remember this? You remember this? Look, Peter was one of the disciples. Why does he say, and Peter? Why does he single him out? Because you remember the last time we saw Peter? He was denying Jesus. He denied Jesus three times. Nope, don't know him. Don't know him. No way. I'm not identifying with him. And when the angel comes and says, hey, be sure the disciples know, but also be sure Peter knows. There's forgiveness. There's grace. There's a God who loves him. There's a God who restores him. And he's going ahead of you into Galilee, and there you will see him just as he told you. See, we can be forgiven through Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Isn't that good news? We are forgiven by God's grace, what Jesus did for us on the cross. And that's our past sins, our present sins, and our future sins. Hey, make sure Peter knows. He doesn't have to live with his mistakes. He doesn't have to live in his failures. He can live redeemed. He can live forgiven. And so can you. Guys, don't don't let the past define you. Don't let Satan come along and go, well, you remember what you did? Mm -mm Mm-mm-mm. God's mad at you. No. You look at the cross. You look at the grace of God. And you go, I am redeemed. I am made whole. I am made new. That's what we're seeing right here. Look, we don't have to live in fear. And so many times in our lives, we we live in fear. Like, what's going to happen? Does God know what's going on with my job? Does God know what's going on with my family? Does God care? Yes, he does. And if he loves you so much that he would send his son to die on a cross for you, and be resurrected for you, there is nothing our God cannot handle in your life. He loves you with an everlasting love. You don't have to live in fear. You can fully trust God. You can fully trust. If God's gonna take care of my eternity, (laughs) he can take care of any problem I face. 
He can take care of any worry I have. He can take care of any struggle I go through. I love Romans chapter 8, probably my favorite chapter in the Bible. And it says in verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God is with you and God is for you. Remember that. That's what Jesus' resurrection shows us, that God is with you. The God of the universe, sovereign God, the one who created it all, is with you. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Hey, you matter to God. You know, sometimes we kind of like, I don't know, right? God's got a lot of big things going on up there, a lot of things in the world out there. No, you matter. Go tell the disciples and Peter, you know, God knows your name. He knows your name. And God puts you in the family you're in for a reason and for a purpose. God puts you in the neighborhood you're in for a reason and for a purpose. God puts you in the workplace you're in for a reason and purpose. God puts you where you are in history for a reason and a purpose. And God's been drawing you to himself. And when you and I begin to understand that, then God has a purpose for us, that God has a mission for us, that we matter to him, it changes the way we live. It gives us meaning because God's with us. Jesus commissions you to share the good news. I love that the gospel's called good news. I love that the resurrection's called good news because there's enough bad news in the world today, right? We live in a broken world, a fallen world. God created it, it was perfect. And then man sinned and we see that sin play out. We see hurt people, hurt people. It breaks our hearts. But Jesus goes, you go share the good news. You go share that I'm making things right. I'm making things new. I'm redeeming. I'm restoring. And one day it'll all be made right. You go share. Think about this. If we don't share the good news, who will? Schools? Politicians? Right? Internet? If we're not out sharing the good news, who, who is? It's our call. It's our purpose. And there are Christ followers, man. We need Christ followers who are teachers and politicians and leaders. But every one of us has a sphere of influence to share the goodness and grace of God. And it starts at home and it starts with us. What God has done in our hearts and our lives. Listen, because of the resurrection, the early disciples moved from fear to faith. You think about this. These 11 guys are up in the room and they're scared. Three years they've spent following Jesus. And now... He's dead. And what do you do with a dead Jesus, right? And all your dreams and hopes are over. But that wasn't the end of the story. They're there cowering. They're there worried. They're there afraid. And when Jesus is alive, man, everything changed. They were scared that the Romans were going to arrest them. They were scared the Jews were going to come for them. Now, all of a sudden, when Jesus is alive, they understand, hey, God is in control. And they go out and start preaching. And they go out and start sharing. And they go out and start serving in the church and building the church. And Peter, just 50 days later, stands up at Pentecost and preaches the good news. And 3,000 people are saved. In our lives, we move from fear to faith. We move to living it out. You know, we've had an incredible summer as a church. I mean, unbelievable. I mean, so many camps, mission trips, lives impacted. I I think about, we had a team in Moldova and working with Ukrainian refugees and just hearing their stories and ministering to so many and passing out Bibles and food and clothes and watching lives being changed. We had a team in the Amazon and, and they're there in the Amazon and they're serving. They went to one village and they were handing out food bags and it just happened, right, that there was some people from a company a Brazilian company that saw them and recognized that their company had paid money for these food bags to come into these villages. And they were there fishing on a, you know, people go to fish for peacock bass in the Amazon, right? And they see this and they call the president of the company and they go, look, we're making a difference. He said, hey, we're gonna give 800 
more food bags, right? I mean, that's like $30,000. We, we want to invest here because they just happen to be there. Our team is there serving. God is like, I'm opening doors that you can't even imagine. Hey, camp, I got the opportunity to be at our student camp, seeing so many lives being changed. And then our Connect camp, I was talking to some parents, and they said, my kids accepted Christ this summer at camp. And they were so excited, third grader to fifth grader, and they go, you know what? I'm so happy because they have Jesus. And going through, I know what it's like to go through middle school and through high school, and I wish I had grown up with Jesus when I was in middle school and high school. And that they have a church that invests in them. And just seeing these parents like tearing up. And I'm like, praise be to God. We are seeing that happen. And that's our call. We don't just sit back on the sidelines. We're not simply in the crowd. He says, you go forward. You make a difference for my name. Look, Jesus' resurrection is the defining moment of history and for you. It's a defining moment of history. I mean, right, everything, you look at history, it all changed right here. Nobody had ever conquered death before, right? It all changed. But it's also a defining moment for you. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. It's a defining moment. It it, it all comes down to what do you believe about Jesus? Who is Jesus? See, Jesus conquered death so that he could spend eternity with you. You have a holy God. And now you have sinful man and all of us have sinned. But Jesus came to pay that price so that God could spend eternity with you. You and I in right relationship with him. Hey, will you believe today? I'm glad you're at church. It's great. But, but there comes a moment of committing my life to Christ. There comes a moment of trusting him, of stepping forward in him. An incredible series, but I want you to know this. All of Mark is leading up to this. Everything is coming to this moment where Jesus says, all the teaching, all the healing, all the miracles, it's for you to be saved. It's for you to be redeemed. It's for you to be restored. The Bible tells us all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Every one of us. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Death, eternal separation from God. But then it says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for you. It's not that we get cleaned up to come to God. It's that God came to us in the midst of our sin, in the midst of our depravity. God came to us. Praise be to God. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. See, the story doesn't end with Jesus dying on the cross. We could be forgiven, but then we're still dead. We're not having eternal life. But Jesus conquered death so that not only are we forgiven, but that we have eternal life with God. Will you believe today? Would you say yes to him today? Hey, would you be bold? Would you be bold today? You know, what we've discovered in the Gospel of Mark is the people stepped out in boldness. And there comes a moment for every one of us. Will we be bold in our faith? Will we be bold about what we believe? Will we talk with our kids? Will we share God's love? Will we make a difference in our day, in our generation? Not just go along with what the crowd says, not just go along and sit on the sidelines, but would we step out? Would we live it out for the glory of God? You know, I think about people like Mary who took that expensive perfume and that generosity and just washing Jesus' feet, this boldness in front of everybody. She doesn't care. I love Jesus. Jesus, I think about Joseph of Arimathea going boldly before Pilate. I want Jesus' body, I'm identifying. I know there's more to the story. I know God's doing something bigger. I think about Peter. I think about Peter and his brokenness and his shame. And how many times do we live in shame? And then the resurrection. The resurrection and going, oh no, God loves me. God's got a plan for me. God wants to use me. God's not done with me. God's still writing my story and I'm using it all for him, for his name and for his glory. God, I'm yours. What about you? What about me? God's still writing our story. God's not finished with any of us yet. God has a plan and a purpose for you. You don't have to live in fear. You can live in faith. You can live boldly for the glory of God. Hey, I want to ask you if you would take out 
this worship guide. If you've got a worship guide there, and I want you to just look at this card that's on the back. Uh, it, this is an all skate. This is everybody. I just want to ask you to do that. If you're online, you can go right there. You can see it on the app. You can go in the chat room. But it just says, where are you today? And, and I want everybody to think about this. this. This is the culmination of this master class, and it really all comes down to this for you. That's what the gospel of Mark's all about. That's what Jesus is all about. And so would you be honest today? And maybe today you would just want to say, A, I want to accept Jesus today as my Lord and Savior. I believe. I believe. I'm stepping over that line. I'm committing my life to Christ. I'm yours. Not my parents' faith anymore. Praise God if I had godly parents, but it's not their faith. It's my faith. My faith, what I believe. Or maybe B, I want to be baptized. Right? I, I want to be baptized. I've been putting it off, but I know God's been stirring in my heart. I'm going to do it. I'm going to trust. You know, Jesus was 30 when he was baptized, right? It was the beginning of his earthly ministry. He set an example for us. Or, or maybe see, I'm committed. I'm a committed disciple. Man, I want to live every day for him. I want this to be the defining moment of my life is Jesus. Not a sports team. Not a job. Not some other person. Jesus. I'm committed. Maybe God's calling you to be a part of a community group or a men's group or a women's or some place where you could share life together. Or D, I don't know. I got some questions. Man, I've loved this series. It's awesome. It's first time kind of diving into the word, but uh, I got some questions. I don't know. Would somebody talk to me? Yes. Just mark it. And we'd love to talk with you. We'd love to pray with you. There's a place for prayer requests. Whatever's going on in your life, you could fill that out and you've got people to pray with you and pray for you. Our worship team is going to lead us in a, a response time and I want to pray for us. And then would you just take a moment? Where are you today? Think about that. Be honest. As we come to the conclusion, what's God saying to you? So Father God, here we are. 2,000 years later, Father. And your grace extends to us. And Jesus, you had us on your mind when you were on that cross. When you paid the price for our sins to redeem and to restore us. But praise be to you that death couldn't hold you down. <laughs> you conquered it so that we could have eternal life with the Father. I pray right now for salvation to come. I pray for those here who've, who've never taken that step of faith, that they would boldly today say, I believe. I'm committing my life to Jesus. I, I pray for those who, who are saying, it's time. I'm, I'm ready to be baptized. I'm, I'm ready to make it public. I'm ready for people to know. I've been kind of sitting in the shadows. I've been in the crowd, but I'm stepping out right now. I pray for those who are believers. Who, and God, we all go through struggles, but I pray today that our commitment would be stronger than ever. And God, we would get into groups. We would put people around us to, to help us grow and to become the men and women you created us to be. I pray for those who have questions. And God, just give us the courage, the boldness to ask those this is what's important. This is what's going to last. Jesus and our hope in you. And so, Father, this is your time. I pray you would stir in our hearts. I pray that you would give us the courage to write it down, even put our name there, drop in the basket in a minute. God, don't let us just push past this time right here. What are you saying to us? As your children, what are you saying to us? Let us focus on you. We give you this time and we give you our hearts. In the name of Jesus, speak. Come Holy Spirit, right now.
Praise forever to the King of Kings. You can be seated. Oh, glory to our great God. That's what we're going to do in heaven. We're going to worship Him. Man, here after the service, I'd love to talk with you. love to pray with you. Whatever's going on in your life, man, whatever you're facing, you're not alone. There's a God who's with you. There's a church that wants to walk with you as well. I'm going to invite our ushers to come forward. It's a chance for us to, to give back, for us to invest 
in God's word and God's truth. And uh, if you've got that card, you filled it out, you can drop it in the basket. If you are giving today, man, this is an opportunity for us to give back. Uh, you've got a prayer request, drop it in. If you're a first-time guest, we'd love to follow up with you as well. Let me say a short prayer. Father, thank you for your presence, for your love, for your grace. You are so good. Thank you for your word and for the gift of your son, Jesus, the defining moment of our lives, knowing you and living our lives for you. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray and we give. Amen, amen, amen. Wow, well, great job, church. 16 weeks, master class. You did it. I wish I had a certificate to give everybody, you know. <laughs> you would have that, but fantastic. And I hope and pray you've got a hunger for God's word and growing. You know, we will have community groups launching. Man, come. We got group links the next couple of weeks. Get in a group. Get in a men's study, a Bible study, a women's study. All great opportunities for us to learn and grow in the word. We even take trips to Israel every couple of years, man, if you want to go. But man, the word of God is alive and active and growing us and working in our hearts and our lives. So many things that are exciting that are happening right now at Rolling Hills. Hey, just want to give you an update about what's happening right next door on the land that we have. So check this out. Hey, Rolling Hills Church family. I am standing out here on what is to be our new parking lot. How exciting is this? And you can see it, you know, I know when you drive in and sometimes it's crazy with parking and, and, and thank you for your patience, but we have a new parking lot and a new road that is coming. And so we'll have 200 more parking spaces that'll be done before Christmas. So we're so excited about that. And also a road that's going to go and connect out to Worthen and out to Taco Bell to Columbia. So you can turn in by the Taco Bell sign and come down here, have a new entrance, new exit. That's gonna give us two entrances and exits. It's gonna be such a blessing and we are so thankful. And so thank you for your patience, you know, but man, get ready because this is gonna be fantastic. And along with the parking lot and the road, we also have an amazing playground. Yes, the playground will be done in the spring. And so we're so grateful for Thomas Constructors are building this. You can see the bulldozers and all the equipment that's going on. Be praying for the progress that's happening here and be praying for all the people that God's bringing. And I just want to say thank you, church. You know, it takes all of us together, giving, serving, making sacrifices. So in these next few months, hey, if you can park off site, if you can find places to park all around, if you can carpool, bring people together, this is our time to be the church. And praise God, we're growing. You know, so many people coming and so many lives being impacted and changed for the glory of God. We get to be a part of this together. So just know I love you. I'm thankful for you and so excited to be standing right here on what God is doing. All glory to Him. Blessings on you, church. Yeah, new parking lot. It's exciting. So you guys now know what I've been doing during the week. So just driving a bulldozer. <laughs> that would be terrible. So, But man, we can't wait. It's going to be awesome to have a new parking lot out there. The new playground's coming too. And so thanks for your patience. We're going to have three more months, but man, if you could park anywhere around, you know, behind in these businesses or over at Husky or wherever you can, and just continue to invite. This is awesome. And God's bringing people and lives are being impacted and changed. And we get to be a part of something really special in our day and our time. Hey, also want to encourage you next week, we launch a brand new series. And I'm excited about the series. It's called Fresh Fruit. And so we're going to be looking at the fruit of the Spirit and how do we live it out? So we've been in this master class, this relationship with God. Now, how do I live that out in all my relationships? And so next week, we're talking about love, right? The fruit of the Spirit is love, and you don't want to miss it. It is going to be powerful. We talk about marriage and with kids and in our lives, relationships with friends and family. How do we live that out of what God's been pouring into us? Church, it's going to be amazing. Let's stand together. Let me pray a blessing over you, and let's go live it out. Father, thank you for Jesus and the hope we have in Christ. Send us out as people redeemed, forgiven, in love with you. Use us to make a difference in our day and our generation for the glory of God. And it's in the beautiful name of Jesus that we pray. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Thanks for being here. Have a great week. God bless. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us this morning. What a powerful series this one has been. And what a great morning of celebration that it was too. We pray that you'll join us back here next Sunday as we enter in our new series called Fresh fruit. 